Patrons, you picked it and you got it. This is the first ever Patreon pick that I'm going to be reviewing. And of course, it was Sculptor by Scott McCloud. Let's get into it. Let me start by saying that you guys, you guys, you guys really know how to pick a bit of a downer of a book. Okay, I was having a really rough week and I had to review this book so I decided to pick it up from Amazon. I read it and oh my gosh, it did not help me having a down week. This book should come with a prescription of Xanax because this thing is a downer. Scott McCloud is a name that's been in the industry for a very long time. He's done a lot of very successful and very award-winning books, none of which I've read. Admittingly, that is my fault. Sorry, Scott. But I've heard great things about all of his work. The story centers around the character of David, and at the beginning of the story, David is really down on his luck. He used to be a very successful artist, however, things have not gone his way recently. The deal he had that was going to go through didn't go through. He got kicked out of his place. He's living on the streets. Basically anything that could go wrong for this guy does go wrong. However, after an encounter with death himself, David makes a deal. He's got 200 days to live. However, he's given the ability to sculpt anything that he can see in his mind using anything in the street, anything in the world around him. Things slightly take a turn for the better for David, however, when he meets this young wannabe actress named Meg. Meg is essentially the manic pixie dream girl, at least at first. Once you start really getting into her character, who, by the way, is probably the most well-written character in this book, you start noticing that there's a lot more going on to this girl and that she has a lot of issues buried deep down. This is also a bit of a slow burn of a book. Nothing really happens in this book except for the exploration of characters for about the first 200 pages of this. I'm not gonna lie, it's not for everybody and I can see why there were a lot of people when I posted a picture of this on my Facebook and on my Twitter that said, I didn't really care for it. I do see your opinion of it. With that said, I thought the book's okay. The book really does get a lot better for me, however, towards the third act. Once we start getting into the third act and David starts realizing, Oh shit, I'm actually running out of time. My 200 days are almost up and I love this woman and I want to spend the rest of my life with this woman. What am I going to do? And I want to leave her with some form of income and this thing isn't paying. Oh my gosh, what's what, what options do I really have? I really dug that. I dug that part of the story. And then you get to the ending, which is probably one of the most beautiful yet soul-crushing things that I've read in a comic in a really long time. Scott McCloud's writing in here is as sharp as pretty much some of the best in the industry, and it really shows why he's recognized as one of the top of the people in the comic book indie scene. The character of David here is extremely flawed, and in some ways you do relate to him and you do feel for him. In other ways, I kind of had to go, dude, you kind of got to get out of this slump. You're just kicking yourself down the hole even further. He's really bad with women. He's not a great talker. He fights for the most random things with people. He's a very flawed and complex character and in certain aspects, yeah, I did relate to him. I also like the fact that Scott McCloud really does explore the concept of what do we leave behind after we die? David is kind of obsessed with this. Throughout the entire book, he pretty much mentions, hey, I want to be recognized for my work. I want to leave something. I want to leave a legacy. I want people to know that I was somebody, that I had talent. And in a lot of ways, it becomes a bit of an obsession. I mentioned already in this video that this book is kind of depressing and I really do stand by that guys. If you were having a bad week or if you're somebody that really doesn't care to read beautiful tragedies because this is what this book ultimately is, it's a beautifully done tragedy, then this isn't for you. Steer away from it, I'm telling you right now because as much as I can read these stories and read beautiful tragedies and read books that don't end on a high note it still was a bit of a slog to get through at times. Let's get to the art here. Scott McCloud's art is beautifully well done. The palette that he decides to use is mostly blues, whites, and blacks, and it definitely fits the tone of the story that he's going for here. 
David, throughout the entire story, is most notably seen wearing a black shirt to kind of emphasize the emptiness that is inside of him. Meanwhile, the other characters around him are kind of drawn in this blue tint to emphasize that not everything is alright with everybody and everybody really has their own problems. I really dug that about this story. The coloring in here was really what struck out to me the most. Scott McCloud also has a really interesting panel layout that he uses here where each and every single page has differing panels. You have sometimes tiny little panels, you have sometimes panels that take up two spaces and you have tiny panels here, here, and then another panel that's long form in the bottom. Really interesting way to tell this story and it works. I especially like the amount of detail that he was able to put into the small little panels that he uses in the corners of his pages. I dug that a lot. I also like the way that Scott McCloud is able to draw faces in here. There's a huge emphasis on emotions and quiet moments throughout this entire book. Sometimes the characters will look really somber and they don't want to talk about things and they don't want to share things and there's always that quiet pause. There was one particular moment in here where David and Meg get into a fight and there's just a pause of one or two panels that really emphasizes that moment after a fight where everything is quiet and you really don't have anything else to say and you're just in the moment and you're thinking, man, I really just want to get past this. Overall, this was a really solid choice, patrons, and I enjoyed my time with it. I will say, like I mentioned earlier, the first 200 or so pages were a bit of a slog and I was not sure about it simply because my mind was not in the right state. That is on me. I'm usually better than that. I'm usually better than trying to bring in my biases towards something or trying to bring in my own emotions towards reading something. but it really affected my reading of this. With that said, I cannot recommend this book to absolutely everybody simply because it is such a big of a tragedy and it is such a big of a downer of a story that I don't think a lot of people will enjoy their read throughout this thing. There is very little hope in this book, especially towards the end of it, as you see where the story is gonna end up and you think things will turn around, but it really doesn't. So with that said, I rate my books on a past borrow by perfect scale, and I'm gonna give this one a borrow. Does not mean it's a terrible book, just means that I cannot wholeheartedly recommend this for everybody. It's a really solid read. Scott McCloud's art here is gorgeous. The panel designs are great, and the story is really, really, really solid. There you have it. For those of you out there that are subscribed to my Patreon, thank you so much for turning me on to this book. I'm actually going to keep this one in my library, and I will definitely revisit this at a later time. And who knows, maybe my feelings will change towards it, maybe it'll be more of a full-fledged buy. But right now, I'm really standing behind that borrow simply because of what I've already stated. With that said, thank you so much, patrons. I love every single one of you, and thank you so much to my regular viewers out there. I love you as well. Thank you for those of you that support this channel. If you want, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. That's gonna be found in the description below. And if you also want, you can help a brother out and you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get some exclusive videos not seen anywhere else. We literally have hours of content on that Patreon right now, and I am so thankful for every single one of you. I love you guys. I will see you sometime this week. Bye.